Hello, thanks for joining me. I wanted to talk a bit about the concept of space and how we start creating the illusion of volume in a two-dimensional picture plane. We have a line that is drawn as a perimeter, basically fencing in all of this empty area. So there exists on the outside of that line more space. When designers start designing, the first thing that they need to know is what the space is that they're working with. So we need to understand the long measurement or the aspect and the short aspect, and those are in proportion to each other. The vertical distance is shorter than the horizontal distance. So we have a height to width proportion or ratio. In this case, I'm using an A4 proportion. The first thing we do is define the area that we're working in. We need to do that in order to know how to design the space. If we're designing in a different proportion, it's an entirely different design. So the idea is that we design for the space that we're working with. So within this space, this is the picture plane. That edge is the frame of reference. The whole area that we're dealing with is part of the design. And within it is what is traditionally known as the picture plane. A plane is a flat area. It's a conceptual area that has height and width. It does not have depth. And we talk about things being on a foreground plane, a mid-ground plane, or a background plane. And we manipulate the concept of planes in order to create a sense of depth. So if I fill the bottom half of the picture plane, I have now visually separated that picture plane into two equal parts. So now we have this shape and this shape within the entire shape of the picture plane. If I divide things equally like this in a bilateral fashion, either horizontally as I've done or vertically going the other direction from top to bottom, those things compete. We have a sense of flat space. We do not have any illusion of volume. There are no visual clues to give us any idea that anything is on top of or in front of another thing. So we still retain a strong sense of two-dimensionality with this. Now, if I move that plane around, I can start creating a sense of a volumetric understanding because now this is not dividing the space in half. But it's still not enough really to give us any, any idea that there is a volumetric understanding intended for this space. And by volumetric, I mean things that appear not as flat shape, but as three-dimensional form. If I add a couple of shapes, we can understand now that both of these shapes are overlapping the white shape and the black shape. If I take away that shape, we've got two geometric shapes sitting in a larger geometric shape, and they're about the same size, and they're the same color. Each of these shapes relates to each other, but also relates to the larger shape of the picture plane. So if I take the circle and move it, I have definitely brought these into closer relationship, but there's still nothing overlapping. There's still no visual clues to tell us that this is a three-dimensional space. The relationship of this shape as I move it changes in relationship to the picture plane. If I put it here, this is an entirely different design or picture than if I move it over here. If I move it up here, I have another design. So every time you shift something, you're changing the entire design. Because you're not just relating these two to each other, you're relating both of these to the entire design space. So the entire design is the design. And within this, we have three shapes. The square, we have the circle, and then we have the overall white shape. So the whole design is the design. By overlapping shapes, I've started to create a sense that there might be spatial depth because the square is in front of that boundary line and because the circle is in front of that boundary line. Whenever something is in front of something, that gives us the concept of space. If I move the square 
and I'll just go ahead and change the color and I will bring it forward. Now we have a stronger sense of depth because the square is now overlapping the circle and both the square and the circle are overlapping this shape which is now being identified as a ground plane that these are sitting on a horizontal plane that either has an edge or runs into the corner and this is wall or maybe that's the horizon and this is sky so you understand how we start thinking visually if i increase the scale we have an even stronger sense of depth because now this is larger this is smaller there is a scale difference this has diminished in size this has increased in size we automatically consider that this is closer because it's larger this is further away this is smaller so that increases our understanding of volumetric illusion another thing i can employ is what we call atmospheric perspective which is basically the idea that things that are closer are brighter or more vivid there is more value contrast light and dark and they're also more detailed things further away there's more atmosphere there's more diffusion and so things can look grayed out and much further away so you can see that the far circle really looks further away than the square because it is closer in value or lightness and darkness to the background. This being almost black stands out more. That's a value contrast issue. So atmospheric perspective and value contrast and saturation contrast in terms of the amount of chroma in a color all work together to help create the illusion of volume. If all of these are the same color or the same value, we are going to lose that sense of volume. Another thing I can do, and you can too, is use vertical placement. Because we are planted on the ground, anything that is closer to us is understood to be lower in our visual field or lower in the picture plane. So by simply lowering and shifting positions vertically, I can still create a sense of volume. This being lower in the picture plane, there's less vertical distance here than there is above it. This is higher in the picture plane. It sits here, so there's more vertical space here and less above it. This is even higher, so there's more vertical space to the bottom of the frame of reference and less vertical space up top so we still have a sense that things that are lower are closer things that are higher are further away simply because this is the way we understand information that we see in our visual field 